but like just do it like I think life's too short to stay in one place um especially when I mean I lived I grew up and lived in South Florida like I knew it like the back of my hand you see the same people you do the same things and you're like I need to change so I I can appreciate that just you know try and figure it out beforehand but you're not going to figure everything out there's going to be like hiccups and unexpected expenses <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm sitting down with my friend Pamela Knowles. And uh, she she does a lot of the content for Visit Savannah. That means uh, written content for the website. She handles some of the social media accounts, amongst so many other things. Mm -hmm. You're basically the invisible person behind the site. <laughs> I mean, you're on a great team of people doing it, yeah, but yeah. a lot of people don't even know what you're doing, but you've got your hands all over the place. Yes. Will you first start us out by telling us who you are and kind of give us an overview of what you do? Sure, so um, I'm Pamela Knowles. Um, I am originally from South Florida. I moved here about four years ago to Savannah um, with my husband, and now we have two kids. And um, about a year ago, I was promoted from the Visit Tybee team to now the Visit Savannah and Visit Tybee team, um, and I'm the digital marketing court, uh, manager. So from uh, what I used to do to now, I, like you said, I have my hands in a lot of different buckets. Um, I oversee the websites mainly, so visitsavannah.com and visittybee.com and savannahareachamber.com. Um, and I do a lot of the writing for the editorials and the copy on the landing pages. Um, I do email marketing with our uh, email newsletters that are either leisure or sponsored. Those are a couple times a month for both brands. And I oversee our social media coordinator for Visit Tybee, which is what my old role used to be. And oversee our SEO practices with our um, the company that we use on the Visit Savannah side. And that's about it that I can think of. It's a lot. Other, <laughs> other duties as assigned, too. Yes, just like as things come up, yeah. you know. So for listeners that aren't familiar with the area mm -hmm. or the industry, mm -hmm. can you kind of explain what Visit Savannah and sure. Visit Tybee are and what they do? Yeah, yeah. So um, Visit Savannah and Visit Tybee are... DMOs, which is short, shorthand for destination marketing organizations for the city. So um, we get paid by the city to market the city as a destination for travelers. Um, so essentially, like the fluffy way of saying it is like we get to tell the story of Savannah or the story of Tybee and hopefully bring in visitors um, to spend their money in tourism here. So that's like the, the goal um, and the overarching concept of both brands. And so for a little background, prior mm -hmm. to being a full-time podcaster and videographer, <laughs> I was the video production coordinator for Visit Savannah and Visit yes. Tybee. And so that's how Pam and I know each other. We miss you a lot. Well, but I, <laughs> but now I'm working, I'm still I know, contracting, I know, so I'm not know. far, just down the road. I know. Um, and uh, yeah, what I, I didn't know anything about the DMO space mm -hmm. or, or tourism and hospitality, but um, there's definitely um, a lot of perks yeah. What are some of like the the best parts of working in this space? Um, well, what what keeps me here and what got me really excited about taking the position is that I, from my background, I used to work in hospitality and in a very, you know, in a role that was basically marketing the property, and so while I enjoyed that, it was very limited to like that product, so. In my role now, like the best thing is it's I'm marketing an entire city, an entire experience. I get to be out and about like we get to do really fun projects when we're able to. And um, there's just so many there's so many stories to tell. Um, there's like endless content to gather. And, and it's in a city that I really love and I'm really excited to be here doing it. So it's like a city that sells itself essentially. So it's an easy sell, which is like really awesome in the DMO space. Um, so like, that's the best part of it. It's just like the entire city and all aspects of it. I love it. 
so and that also includes like i know that when there's a new hotel going online yes. or there's a new restaurant we get to go try it and experience it um some free perks to that which we call product you know? yes <laughs> testing the product yeah um and we're kind of like have it, my friends often come to me and like i'm going downtown this saturday like where should i go like what's the new place like tell me where to stay what to do um and then even family members that come and travel here they, they come to me and they think i'm like the know-all for the city and i guess for my small group i am but you just get to stay on top of what's new and happening in the city and the events. We get to go to the events, usually free, um, to gather content. And it's just fun. It's a fun job. I love it. So what about the rest of the team? Because I already interviewed, if you're a listener, yes. Shannon Lowry. She was on episode two of 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, are the, what does everyone do in, in that role? So in our immediate team and our digital content team, um, we are... Uh, spearheaded by Lauren Cleland, who is our director of digital marketing. Um, she's a phenomenal woman to work for. She's just so, so nice and so knowledgeable. Um, what she's so organized, so organized and so on top of it. And, um, she's really, uh, been such a positive influence on me being here and having like a female in a leadership role. That's not threatened by other females working for them. I, that's the background that I come from. It's very toxic. So it's very refreshing to have like a leader who really supports the whole team and what we need to do to get the job done. Um, and we have uh, Shania. She's our Visit Tybee social media coordinator. So she's out on Tybee a lot. Um, she does all the social media channels for that brand as well as what we consider non-leisure, which is the uber fun brands of this the chamber sports council all of that um and we have shannon uh who does our visit savannah social media she's a social media guru um and so we have you which is great um and so like that's really our immediate team that we're working with like on the day-to-day and we're part of the bigger communications team the department that has like pr and all those other aspects like graphic design and all of that but for our team, we're, we're small but mighty, I think. Yeah, it's very collaborative. Yes. I love that. Like, my favorite, we have a standing monthly meeting for, like, brainstorming new content for, like, the season ahead or the month ahead. And that's, like, my favorite meeting by far because we're just, like, spitballing ideas or, like, crazy. I remember you saying you loved it when I would be like, is this possible? Like, could we do something like this? And you're like, tell me. Like, what's the vision? And we try and find a way to do it. And, like, that's... That's a really fun part. Yeah, rather than say no, I just feel like, okay, we can't do it <laughs> on the, the, the scale of like a Hollywood production, but yeah. we can figure out how to do that in our own way. Mm-hmm. Um, like the floating cup and the ghost hunter kind of thing. Yeah, and that's the that's the perk of having all of us with so many different backgrounds. And, and we're in a space that's very like considered like safe. There's no bad ideas. Um, so one of us could be like, I have this like strange concept that I think we could use. And it takes two three of us to really like flush it out and make it like applicable for what we want to do and it's it's fun to do that and then like all the way to the end product and have like a video to share or an editorial to write or whatever um it's a fun process with our team so when people come to you and they ask for advice for stuff to do downtown um or on social media what kind of feedback are you getting is it whether that's like comments you're seeing or actual feedback from you on what the impact that you're making from the perspective of like a visitor um it's just telling the stories that they wouldn't normally have heard of otherwise so uh travel is right now is kind of like getting back in motion from covid but when we're able to write those editorials for a website that hire like that that showcase hole in the wall restaurants or places to go or people to see or, or you know places to stay um it's kind of opening their eyes to like much broader concept of savannah it's not just like box hotels and chain restaurants we have we don't have that we have like we have that but if you want more of like a uh, local experience we can share that and give insight to that and hopefully get people not just in the historic district, but outside of the historic district. So going to see Starland and and all of that um, is really important to get the full experience of Savannah. 
Um, let's do a little bit more about you and mm-hmm. your and the, kind of the steps that you had to take to get you to where you are today. So mm-hmm. walk us walk us through basically what your career has been so far. What did you go to school for? Start there. Um, I went to school for business, very generic, um, in South Florida. I went to Florida Atlantic University, um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And that was like a big struggle in my 20s with like going to school and nothing really jumped out at me of like pulling me in. Um, But I graduated and I wasn't ready to be like an adult yet. So I got my master's degree. You didn't have like a dream job? No. Interesting. It evolved. um, Like in high school, I thought I wanted to do fashion and go to New York and live in a big city. And I wanted to get out of town. And then I met Jetty, my husband. And um, it kind of changed my plans because I, I thought, you know, well, let me stay close to home and see how that goes. And then it kind of evolved from there. Um, But uh, no, is that like depressing? No, 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 no. (laughs) I just like nothing. I thought I was going to be an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. And it changes. Mm -hmm. It changes with like the classes you take, the people you meet, um, friends that you see become successful. You're like, what are they doing? Like, what what about their job is like keeping them happy and engaged? Um, So... I went and got my master's degree from Nova Southeastern University, which is in Fort Lauderdale. Um, And that was, again, for... (laughs) It's just so random. Um, It was for business, but sales management. And I was part of a very small class. And um, it was interesting, and it was good, but I was really doing it because I wasn't ready to, like... I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. So I stayed in school, and I did that. Um, And then I got laid off from my job. I was like an AT&T contractor, which was like, I did spreadsheets and stuff. It was super boring. It was the worst job. <laughs> um, so I got laid off and uh, a position to open at Four Seasons Resort in Palm Beach. And so um, I knew a little bit about the brand and I had um, uh, connections that, you know, was going to get me an interview. It was going to be a very like introductory position entry level um, I was a PBX operator for the hotel which for people who don't know like when you dial zero like I was answering the phone and like directing people to the other um, restaurants or wherever they wanted to go front desk uh, so when I what's PBX stand for I don't know it's just like industry jargon yeah for, like, the operator it's kind of. it's the switchboard so like you have like an actual switchboard it was digital but I don't know. I don't know what it stood for. Hmm. I was there for so short. Like, so when I was considering taking that job, I got it from both sides. Like, yes, get in the door, start working for them and you can move yourself up. And then on the same side, it's like, you have your master's degree. You're going to go be like entry level PBX operator. Like you can do better than that. And so I just had such a drive that I was like, well, I know I can move up once I show my skills. So that's what I did. I took the job. Um, I worked in Palm Beach, had an awful commute, but that's South Florida. And um, within six months, I was promoted. And then with six months again, I was promoted again and again. To Within a year, I was front desk supervisor. Still not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the marketing team. Um, but those jobs are like highly coveted because they don't, there's not a lot of staff within a hotel. So you have to wait for someone to leave. Um. And when that person did, I went up there and I, I got that job. And I was in that job for a couple of years. The problem with hotels and I, us. <laughs> Detail. I really appreciate like that was a great learning opportunity for me. The problem with hotels is like there's no direct path to go up the ladder. And it's really you're waiting for other people to go take another op- job or to be transferred to another property before you can step into that role. Um, And what happened at my property was I was a coordinator and then there was a director. There was no manager position. So to make the jump from coordinator to director is like a very big jump. And when I had that conversation after a couple years, it was like, oh no, you're going to need to stay in this role like a lot longer before you can ever move up. And I just wasn't comfortable with that. I was like bored overqualified for what I was doing. 
And unless you are willing to transfer to another property, which means moving, you know, my family, um, I was just kind of like over it. And that's when I went home one night and I was like, hey, babe, uh, what do you think about moving? I was like, all right, well, where do you, where do you think you want to move to? Because my husband's line of work is water, like marina, boating. He's like, I just need to be near water. Like, where do you want to go? And I said, well, what about Savannah? My family is in Tennessee. His family was still in South Florida. It was like a middle spot. Um, and he was like, okay, like, let's start the steps to do that. And we did. That was like pre-kids, so we could get up and move. What are the steps? Looking for a job, or did you start moving here before you had to move? <laughs> um, It's really hard to interview for jobs when you're not, like, local. Um, and so we kind of just skipped that part <laughs> and moved up here without jobs. Um so the cost of living up here is a lot less than what it was in South Florida. So we had some like reserves to get us up here. And then my husband was running his own business down in South Florida and was like, okay, well, I'll keep working in South Florida. You move to Savannah, get settled, find a job. And then I'll be looking for jobs and then I'll move up. So it was two years of like living separate lives. And within those two years, I was pregnant with Parker and trying to find a job. And getting down to the wire of like, okay, I'm like pregnant. I'm going to start showing. I don't have a job. No one's going to hire me. And that's when I interviewed for Visit Tybee and um, got the job, thankfully. Uh, and, and by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started in December and I was due at the end of March. And I was like a month in. I was like, so I got to talk to you. And she's like, you're pregnant. I was like, yeah. She's like, it's okay. We'll figure it out. They had, they knew I was capable of my job, and I was very confident that I could schedule out and get my job done. Three months of work. So essentially, I did six months of work within the first three months of my job, so I could go on maternity leave for three. While months. While you were still learning it too. While I was is, still learning it. Yeah, another um, challenge. So I, thankfully, I had a lot of trust put in me, and I was able to provide what I had promised. And um, I think it just proved myself to the the company you know so i too planned to move this i had a lease signed in savannah before yeah. i had my job um why not charleston or jacksonville or some other coastal city it's a good question um the year prior i had come up and visited my cousin who lived here um and me and my sister came to see her and we spent a long weekend and it's going to sound silly for people who aren't familiar with Savannah, but like I fell in love with the trees, like the big oak trees all downtown, the squares, the cobblestone, the history. Um, I was really drawn to that. Like I'm, I've always been like a tree person and like an outdoor person. So I remember going downtown with my cousin and driving down Liberty Street or Victory Street, like now I don't even know what street it was, but I was just like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Like you get to live here and you know, all this stuff. So I was just really, I fell in love with the city. And um, I knew if I got here, I would figure it out on like what I could do. And I actually have a really funny story. I spent a lot of like my time before I got the job, when I was jobless, experience in the city. So I'd come downtown for the day and go to a coffee shop or, you know, um, do all of those things. And I remember one time I walked by our office building. So it's downtown. It's on Bay Street. It's um, like a busy part of town. And I walked by and we have that plaque on the side that says like Savannah Chamber of Commerce, Visit Savannah, Savannah Sports Council, all that. And I had been following Visit Savannah on Instagram for like a long time. That was Na like helping me navigate the city and like learn about the city. So when I saw Savannah, visit Savannah on that plaque, I was like, oh, this is their offices. And I just looked, I said, I'm going to work in there one day. I'm like I, I, that is my goal. It might take a while, but like I want to be part of what, what inspired me to move here. Like I want to, I want to do that for other people. Um, which sounds like so cheesy, but it really did happen. We have similar stories. I, I, I followed yeah. the Instagram account too. And yeah. I was like, how do I get paid to take pictures of Savannah? Yeah. yeah. And when I had the job 
on Visit Tybee, I got a lot of messages like that from people who were like, don't you love your job? Like, how did you get your job? Like, are you hiring? Like, how can I do this? And I'm like, Pfft. you're not cool enough. Yeah, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, it was like I, something drew me to the brand. Um, and then I got to like, I do what I do, which is really fun. Um, in the first in the first marketing role, mm-hmm. what were your tasks? At the hotel? Yeah. Um, so I was the PR and marketing coordinator. Um, and it was very like, I was doing purchase orders for the marketing department. I was actually like balancing the budget month to month. So sitting with like the sales department and the catering department and seeing like. Oh, not the advertising budget, like the whole. All of it. Oh, yeah. Wow. But um, so it was really a lot of desk work. Um, but I also did all of the social media for the property. And we didn't really do UGC, like user generated content then. Um, so I was out taking photos. So that's where I like really enjoyed photography and getting out in the property. And I loved that about that job. Like I wasn't at my desk all the time. Um, and then we would host events on property or around town um, that I got to be a part of and help plan. Um, and then the major one was Palm Beach Food and Wine Festival. We were the host hotel for that, you know, festival that was like four days with celebrity chefs and things like that. So there's a lot of like perks to that job, too, of like getting to go to those events and meeting those celebrities and do that. Um but yeah, it was just a lot of clerical work and, and doing the social media. And then, um, so you had no, not a huge writing background because no. you didn't study writing. No. You didn't know about SEO. No. So a lot of that has come just on the job yeah. training. Yeah. Um, when I first joined the team, Lauren was really great and was like, what is something that you want to learn? Because um, she's a big believer and I am too of continued education uh, because I don't try to sound like I know it all. I don't. Um, but I did tell her, I'm like, SEO is a mystery to me. And I know it's really important. Um, I'd love to learn more information on that. And later that year, we had an SEO vendor. We did training. I just like wrote down so many notes. And then eventually like came to oversee our efforts on our end for SEO. Um, and I still have a lot to learn, but it's very, uh, interesting and then to see your hard work pay off because it's like seo is behind the scenes you don't know if what you're doing is working until you check on it later and then you see it takes time yeah. it takes time yeah. and um, benchmarking and, mm-hmm. yeah and i don't know if we actually said seo stands for search engine optimization yes yes um, which is basically building keywords on a website yep. so that google will rank it better so that when people are looking for somewhere mm-hmm. to go we show up yes so the whole um purpose of seo is so when people google like we are at least in the top three if not number one um and so by doing that we have to put these keywords that people are searching into our website um whether it's through editorial or copy on landing pages or whatever what i have what have you and then um google crawls your site periodically and the more it sees those keywords it's like oh this site is, uh, you know, becoming a leading uh, knowledge on that keyword. Let's bump them up in the ratings. And so it's like a, you know, a love-hate relationship with Google. Do you have a favorite editorial you've written? No. No, I don't. I probably should. Um, Any that were particularly fun to research? Oh, of course. Uh, There is um, an outdoor dining article on Tybee. That always performs really well. And that one was fun to go and experience the outdoor restaurants that we have there. Um, And then any of the cocktail ones on the Savannah side are a favorite. Um, I just wrote one on like romantic places to stay. It was before Valentine's Day. And I was like, I'm so inspired to go try these places and stay there. Um, Because a lot of hotels, I, I think that's the one side I haven't really experienced um, but yeah, I think, I think I fall in love with any editorial I write that's not sponsored. Um, just because like you learn more about the topic. Like I just wrote Irish heritage and I learned so much on Savannah's Irish heritage. 
um, that I didn't know. So it's like, it feels like continued learning. I'm just learning more about the city, like the more I do. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy. Like I can even walk downtown and mm-hmm. see something I've never seen before. And I've gone up that street like a hundred times. Mm-hmm. I'm like, How have I never noticed that? Yeah. And it's, you know, with the history and yes, yeah. it's constantly, you're never like, okay, I've heard no, it all and no. learned it all. No, we're yeah. never done. Never. Um, so what about going forward in, in 2021 and in the future? What are some other skills that maybe you'd like to develop more? Um, I really want to continue with SEO and like getting better with that. It's valuable. It's very valuable. Um, I consider myself like, okay, I've mastered like the beginner part of it and now I want to move to like intermediate and like get even better and, um, more knowledgeable on that. And I just want to continue to be a better writer. Like I, there's still the the day that I turn in an editorial and don't have any, uh, you know, edits to make, like, that'll be a great day. But we're always, like, trying to be better and writing better. So I definitely want to continue my writing strengths. It's like working out, too. It's like the more you do mm-hmm. it, the easier it gets. And when you stop, you yeah, know, you get, you're you kind of like, what is it? Yeah. And we do, like, modified AP style. Mm-hmm. In-house. Yeah. Yeah. So just learning more about APA and things like that um, can always get better. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go back a little bit um, on the personal side. Yeah. Um, talk about what that. What is that? Um, you mentioned some females can feel threatened by other females. Like what? Yeah. Give me a story there. I want to know more. So this has just been my experience. Um, in my positions prior to joining the Visit Tybee, Visit Savannah team, um, in marketing, it's generally like there's a lot of women, especially in PR. Um, there's always a lot of women. And I've always felt pushback from my leaders and my directors or my managers. Um, just that, uh, you know, you know, I'm talking in general, but like I'm really thinking of one person. Um, she while I was very good at my job and clearly overqualified for my job. I never made that come off that way. I just wanted to take on more responsibilities. So that's how I stay engaged in my job. I want to, I'm doing great at what I do. Let me get, let me have more and get better and take on more and take more off your plate. Like that's my goal for my manager. Like, let me take more off your plate. Um, And she didn't really respond well to that. Like she wanted me to be comfortable in my position. Like, no, this is like stay in your lane, you know, Um, or my suggestions for changing things up or getting better wasn't received well because she didn't come up with it or she would take credit for my ideas, which is, you know, fine. We're, we're a team. Um, but it was really the lack of drive to want to make me better. I think a good manager is a reflection on how well their, um, employees do. So like, your goal as a manager should just be like, I want to see you flourish. And like the more awards you win or you go find a better job that's even like a step above of what you're doing. Great. Like that's what you want as a manager. Um, and she was just very threatened by it and didn't. And you think it was because she was a female and not just because of who she is? <sighs> because it's happened on more than one occasion. Hmm. I mean, that has been my experience. Um, like I said, Lauren's the first one that hasn't treated me like that which has been really refreshing do you incorporate that into how you manage also yeah absolutely um because our team is women which is really great um i just try and uplift and sort of mirror those um traits that i really respond well to when i'm managed great yeah, I didn't. Um, I don't really even believe in comp. I'm now in the free market, but yeah. I don't even believe in competition because no. a photographer is not a photographer. It's not a photographer. It could be portrait. It could be landscape. It could be mm-hmm. lifestyle. It could be yeah products. It could be you know yeah. cars. People people have and everyone has their own lens, literally and figuratively, that they yeah. that they shoot through and they see the world. And so um, there's enough to go around. Totally, totally. There's enough. Yeah, yeah there's enough. So there's no reason to like knock other people down. No. Rising tide. Yeah, exactly. So 
this a uh, uh, goal of this podcast is to help people who maybe don't know what they want to do, mm-hmm. like we didn't yeah. when we were younger, yeah. to kind of speed them along the process. And um, you and I both went to school to mm-hmm. kind of discover what we did or didn't want to do, and we both kind of stumbled. Well, I stumbled into hospitality. Yeah. Um, so what, looking back, what were some, what some things you would, not that you regret them, but things you would do differently to kind of speed you along that process? Um, I guess in college, because you want the freedom and because of your school schedule, you oftentimes like work in the food industry. So like whether you're a server or a waitress or a bartender or whatever, um, I did that for quite a while and it gave me the flexibility that that I needed for school and to go out and things like that. But I wasn't gaining any of the, you know, um, traits that I needed for what I wanted to do. And I wasn't experiencing anything to say, okay, I took this job. It's not what I, in the field I want to do. Let me try something else. Um, so I was really depending on my classes to guide me. And when you don't have any classes that really inspire you, you're like, great, like, I just got a degree and I still don't know what I want to do. Um, so I guess it's more of like, step out of your comfort zone and try jobs or experiences or um, temp at places just to get more exposure to different different ideas. Like, I know in my role at the hotel, I did a little bit of coding and I kind of taught myself that. And it was just to like tweak certain things on the website. HTML. Yeah. HTML. And I, I loved it. Like it was so cool to like put in these codes and then like flip over and it made the change that you wanted or it didn't. And it was like a puzzle, like trying to figure out like, what do I need to put here and do this? Um, and that wasn't really a big thing back then that I knew about in school. Um, and I would have taken a class in that if I, if I knew. Um, so I guess just like open yourself to up to more experiences. Like don't stay in your comfort zone. Is school needed for what you do? Um, four years, like undergraduate. Yes. Um, but I don't think I needed my master's degree. It just put me in debt, to be honest. And I didn't even get it in the field that I was going into. And I can't tell you how many times I went for a promotion in my jobs and um, my director didn't even realize I had a master's degree. Like how infuriating that is. We were like, well, yeah, I, you know, I have this and I have this degree. And he's like, oh, I didn't know you had that. And I was like, <laughs> you hired me. <laughs> I've been here for three years. You don't know that I have a master's degree. Like that doesn't count for anything. And they really go based on your skills and your knowledge and like how you are in the workplace. And so I think like experience weighs a lot more. Um, and, that. and I would also say that like the name of your school doesn't really no. make a, that much of a difference either. No, no. So many of my classmates were, I got to go to UF or I got to go to FSU. Um, and I didn't want to go to those places, um, mainly because of the cost, but also like to be that far away and, I was never into like collegiate sports. A lot of them were like football teams and like do this and that. Um, so yeah, the name of your school, no one cares unless it's like, you know, Princeton or Harvard or something. Like well, it that. depends on what field you're in too. So yeah. it's not completely useless. But For what we do. Yeah. I don't think anyone's like, mm, where did you go? Right. And especially because I'm from out of state, you're also mm-hmm. out of state. People aren't familiar with schools in different areas. Right. So if you're not going to be in your area, it doesn't really matter no um serving i mean what what did you do you oh gosh <laughs> and you because i a lot of people that serve yeah which i didn't i did bartend for yeah. about five months uh-huh. um say that like you have to work as a food server yeah do you, you have a lot of respect that? for your server um i started at um applebee's i was a car side to go girl on roller on rollerblades no no it was just like i did the to go and people would pull up and you'd run out to their car okay um it's like a premonition for covid yeah yeah and it was it was a it was my first like working experience um i 
not to get off topic, but like my manager was like sexually harassing me and I was like 16 and um, it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for like that industry. Um, but the tips are good and the t- like the working hours are good. So I just changed restaurants. Um, and I always had a drive to like get more on like the luxury side of things. So I would like start where I am and then I'm like, okay, well, I want to have better clientele. Let me go work at like a higher end place. So I went to go work at a steakhouse and like do do that similar to like what I did with the hotel. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, you have a lot of respect for the people, not just the ones on the front of the house, but the people in the back of the house that are like slaving away for the food. I ate so many French fries in that job. It was amazing. <laughs> French fries and boneless wings. <laughs> Um, so do you have advice for people that maybe want to relocate? Um, because it is pretty scary to to take that leap, especially not having a job. Yes. Don't do that. That's my job. That's my advice. Don't be scared to move out of your, what you're comfortable in. So like, I'm all for going out of your comfort zone. Um, and so like, don't shy away from that aspect of it, but like, think it through if you can. Um, but if you, if you're in a situation where you're like, I just need to get out and I'll get there and figure it out. Like it can be done. Like, will you probably go in debt from it? Yeah. But like, that's what credit cards are for. You'll figure it out. Um, but like, just do it. Like, I think life's too short to stay in one place. Um, especially when, I mean, I lived, I grew up and lived in South Florida. Like I knew it like the back of my hand, you see the same people, you do the same things and you're like, I need to change. So I, I can appreciate that. Just, you know, try and figure it out beforehand, but you're not going to figure everything out. There's going to be like hiccups and unexpected expenses. Um, and just, if you're with someone, you want to have their support, you want them to be on the same page. That's really important. Um, Jetty was really good about that. He was ready to go. And even when things like didn't go according to plan, like we had each other. So if you don't have that support, it'll just like pull you apart. You know, that's my advice. How about um, places that Visits of Venice sent you for different uh, conferences, professional development opportunities? Yeah. So pre-COVID, um, I would go to Content Marketing World, which is in Cleveland, Ohio, which is a really fun place to go. <laughs> and um, went there. And that was like, that that was the first conference I'd ever went to and it's huge it's huge it's like four days and you walk into the conference hall and it's thousands of people that just do content like it oh like oh my gosh like you think you're on like this island you don't realize content is everywhere it's in within every company for the most unusual things and there's like so many different aspects of it so like it was eye-opening um and it was one of those conferences that had like an overwhelming amount of sessions to go to. And I was just like, let me learn about AI. Let me, let me go to this one about writing. Let me do that. And it was just, it was so much fun. I could have been there for like another four days. Mm. Um, just wish it was in a different city. <laughs> I like Cleveland. It's okay. But like, that's where it's held every year. So it's like mix it up mm-hmm. year after year. Sure. Yeah. But that's been about it. Okay. I've gone down to um, Jekyll Island, which is in Georgia. It's about like a an hour and a half away. Um, an hour yeah, Georgia away. has more coasts than, I've, than I realized. Yeah. About 100 yeah. miles of mostly mm-hmm. undeveloped coasts. Yeah. yeah. I went down there for like uh, a conference at this really like posh resort. And um, it was very like influencery, if that's a word. Um, and I didn't get as much out of it because like that was, again two years ago when like influencers were like all the rage and like I guess now it's kind of like kind of not not what it used to be yeah people um developed a a a false sense of self Mm -hmm. and they think that like oh will you like put me up and because I have like a hundred thousand Instagram followers or whatever I just got an email today uh a Maltese uh wants to do pet friendly stuff in our in our city and has like 15,000 followers and I'm like how does this <laughs> like how are people still buying into this mm-hmm. you know 
some of it's just really superficial and makes you feel icky. Sure. Yeah. Um, resources. There's the content marketing world. Um, if, if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, I want to learn more. Yeah. What Pam does sounds really interesting to me, and I want to um, learn more about what she does. Yeah. What, what are some uh, places people can go? Um, YouTube. I mean, as cheesy as that sounds, like YouTube has uh, so much continued education on there that's free. Um, in my uh, free time, I would dabble in like graphic design and a lot of those Adobe programs I'm not familiar with. And so um, there's quite a few people on YouTube that are just doing really great tutorials um, and you can just learn so much. Um, and then for writing, I learn best by reading. So like the more I absorb, the better I write. So that comes in the forms of books, uh, websites, articles, all of that. Newsletters, I sign up for random newsletters that I get. And um, a lot of them within the uh, content space, but also any, other... Any particular newsletters that you love or that you read um, every day? Anne Hanley is like my favorite. She's a great writer. And she actually, I met her at Content Marketing World. And um, she does a great newsletter that's like every other week. And she always has tremendous amount of information and um, learning and to funny memes to her. It's just the way she writes. It's very personable. Um, and so like I fangirl over her <laughs> like a lot. Um, but she's probably my favorite within the, the content space. Um, and then I also like subscribe to other DMOs and their newsletters. What we do on Visit Savannah, I consider is like very elevated, but you can still learn from like smaller DMOs in other cities. Um, so I try and get as many of those newsletters coming to me because you never know what's going to spark your, you know, an idea. So I always recommend like, always see what your competitors are doing. You never know. It's funny, at the start of um, COVID, during the shutdown, mm -hmm. I, I pulled an idea from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And basically, a lot of people really love the video that I put together. And I was yeah. like, I stole that from Vegas. <laughs> so you can't really give me like but too much credit for that's that. That's content. Like it's the, the internet. Everything is reused. It's yep. just like the way you spin it, the way you, you turn it to like work for what you're doing. Well, then seeing other people use our stuff. Yeah. That's like, hey. There you go. That looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, whenever I see a, 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 a story from Charleston come out, I was like, I wrote that. I wrote something like that a couple months ago. Like, all right, I see you, Charleston. I see you. Yeah, don't think we don't notice. Yeah, I notice. <laughs> all right. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> so any other closing words? Um, no, just listen, just find what you enjoy to do and then try and find a, a way to make money at it. So like... If something off the wall makes you really happy, don't shy away from it. Just see how you can incorporate it into your your job or your job search. You'll find something. Yeah. And don't don't shy away from like uprooting and changing your your home base because it's actually really, really cool. You meet a lot of cool people like you and have opportunities that you wouldn't have had had you stayed where you were. So like. If you're feeling a drive to do that, just do it. You'll figure it out. It's very rewarding. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. In upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, creative professionals, and entrepreneurs. Uh, if you have suggestions for the show or guests, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're uh, listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to that. And uh, you can find out more and buy some cool hats and apparel, mugs uh, at we create, or sorry, at creative-truth.com, which is also up there. It was up there. It's creative-truth.com. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.